welcome to Thought Song. This is a podcast where we talk about weird dreams, odd laws, and interesting thoughts. I'm Nick Crompton, and I keep my collar poppin'. Oh. Oh, yeah, by the way, thanks for inviting me to that fucking message board, Cyan. Papa Crump. Papa Crump. Since then, my life Crump's has not squad. known peace. Well, that's fine. Who are you? Uh, I am Samuel Slowly. <laughs> Phone call. <laughs> Hello. And I'm Sam redoing his intro, Risley. I'm sure that's going to sound seamless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be like, I'm Sam. I'm Sam redoing my intro, Grizzly. <laughs> and yo, it's Tessa Brooks, and I got the competition shook. And it's we have Nick, a pretty good show for you today. Nick Crompton and Tessa Brooks and Sam Grizzly. It's us. We're the Thought Sauna now. Yes, I, I have invaded Brett's body with I my don't soul. Understand this and I got Cyan with the hook. We are Team 10. Who the hell are flipping you? Uh, I don't Jake understand Paul, the Team joke. 10. England is my city. <laughs> and we like to keep it litty. I don't have any more Tessa Brooks jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Sam, my vlogs, I guess. We've yeah. been, unfortunately, kind of keeping up with Team 10. Yeah, we went down nope. a Team 10 rabbit I hole. To, like, we wanted to know all the Team 10 drama. So we spent the past couple of days kind of researching and going really into uh, Team 10 lore. Jake Paul and his Team 10. The Team 10 universe. Team 10 a extended universe. And boy, it, uh, it does not shed the Pauls in a better light. Oh, no. It makes it way worse. Who's who? It, team 10 is like this group they've made. Yes. Team 10 is like Jake Paul's posse. Yeah. Basically. Who all is in that posse? Nick Crompton, and I keep my, my collar stays popping. And Tessa Brooks before uh, she left because Jake Paul is a... Is Jake a, Paul's a sociopath. Yes, they, yeah, Jake Paul's fucking terrifying. He's a psychopath. Anyway, we don't need to really talk for much more minutes about Team 10, as I'm I sure just, like, a lot of people have forgotten about them. I, look, do not I, care looked, up a pic I looked up a picture of Team 10, and they all just kind of look like tools. Well, yeah, you well, got yeah. it. That's not anything new. No one is surprised by that. Yeah, no, the right. fact that we're talking about Team 10 this many months later really uh, outdates the Weird. episode. Hey, it's 420 seconds. Nice. Hey, Let's get to our first segment. I, okay. would like to, uh, I would like to state that I am awful at keeping up with pop, pop culture. And well, that's why you have us. Yeah, that's pretty just much. fine. We like to keep up with pop culture after it has happened. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. I like to read the whole story. We're like we're something of pop culture historians. Yeah, I yeah, like to I, I like to I wait like for to it think, to end and then I've been watching. I like that. That's yeah. kind of how I am. I don't like I don't like incomplete stories. I have to wait for it. See, that's why I waited for the whole Azalea Bakes Elon Musk thing to go away. To yeah, before I read about it. <laughs> well, it's five minutes, so let's get on to our first segment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Good intro. <clears throat> uh, it's me, Sam, and I'm Hi. bringing you your shower thought today. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Thank you for coming for my dish, my show and tell, my tell and tell. <laughs> what will um, you show and or tell us, Sam? I would like to tell you that bean bags are just boneless sofas. Uh huh. Uh yeah. Uh huh. That was your that thought. And it's yeah. a good one, but when when I think when people think of bones, mm -hmm. you know they think of just hard, kind of straight. Yeah. You know, met what if bones is just like little balls, little spheres for the bean bags? Maybe those are its bones. So yeah, we're all just full of pellets. Yeah, bones for bean bags aren't the same as bones for people or couches. Couches want, having the same bones as people. <laughs> I would like to run another idea by you. Okay. <laughs> it's not that bean bags don't have bones. It's just that bean bags have an exoskeleton containing their soft interior. Uh, uh, how soft is their interior? Because the outside of a bean bag has never been 
really like a shell to me, I don't think. I don't think I've ever laid on a well, beanbag and been like, man, I feel a, like I'm on an exoskeleton it, right it's, now. It's still a container. Maybe the beanbags are crustacean, like without their <laughs> shell. Oh my god, maybe they're like a hermit crab and they don't have their like home. Oh, like maybe the, beanbags are like sofas before they find their shell. Oh, it's like the episode of SpongeBob where Mr. Krabs doesn't have a shell and he looks like oh, god, the way that he was, That was a terrible That was a weird episode, episode. wasn't it? <laughs> Boy, oh gosh, almighty, that sucked. And it established uh, the fact, and it it had established in canon, in SpongeBob canon, that Mr. Krabs had in fact been to war. Oh yes. yeah, well that happens a lot. Mr. Krabs is a fucking sailor man. He's always talked about the war. Yeah, yeah, he's always been on the front lines. That's, My uh, thing is like, we've never ever seen another town in SpongeBob beyond Bikini Bottom. Well, no. no. We no. saw Squidville. No. We saw Squidville, and we saw the... No, Squid- the that Squidville the- was that, like, community inside of Bikini Bottom. All right, well, we've seen Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom. Yeah. <laughs> we've seen the city of Atlantis. Come on. Sam David Bowie was in it. Yeah. Wait, The, the ocean's a big place. That. You don't remember the Atlantis thing where they went to Atlantis, and it was, like, an hour-long it was musical? Movie. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, the 45-minute TV special, and David Bowie was, like... The voice actor or the main dude? No. Oh. Atlanta Square Pan is Sam. Was well, that we can't be friends what it was any- called? Yeah, we can't be friends anymore if you haven't watched Atlanta Square Pan. All right, now wait a second. It, it wasn't that actually that good. No, it was all. It was actually the most fucking incredible piece of media oh, really? that's ever been put out. And I don't, I, 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 so I know I don't talk about this often. I don't want to get political on the show, but I'm going to stand by my opinion and say Atlanta Square Panis is one of the best pieces of media out there. And if you disagree, you're a fucking Nazi. <laughs> this is where. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, well, Sam, them's politics. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> wow. Okay. Guess I got to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You don't have to watch. It is it's like not. It's like annoying. It's pretty ugly. It, it sucks. It's not. It's a musical, In Sam. A it's like ways. a SpongeBob musical. And like the the occupants of Atlantis are these weird looking yellow submarine, like blue. You know the blue dudes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like the, blue, the big blue meanie. Yeah, the blue meanies. But Wait, if they were, just I thought I thought fish. King Neptune was like. Atlantis or whatnot, or is, does he just preside over Bikini Bottom? No, King Neptune rules the sea. Oh, what about Poseidon? Poseidon also rules the sea. Was Poseidon ever in SpongeBob? Poseidon is never in SpongeBob. I don't think. I think it is just maybe. King Neptune. Maybe no, he's Neptune like is God. just the Roman name for Poseidon. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Welcome back to fucking stupid idiot sauna. <laughs> where everyone's a fucking idiot here. We're hey, dumb and we were we talking about beanbags and An their informational skeletons. show where we're all dumb. We need to let's, get back on the top. Yeah, back yeah, to okay, bonus let's get back. Sticks. So beanbags are just uh child sofas. Yeah, they just haven't basically. found their shell yet. So where do They're the shell pubescent look? sofas? Maybe they have to like go through a trial <gasps> to get the their balls uh, you know how like, you know, how our bones fuse together as we get older and we're born with more bones than we die with. Yeah. What yeah. if the balls inside the bean bag over time start fusing into oh, couch bones? Oh, they like start coming together. Yeah, and like a bean bag is just an adolescent. Oh my God, and then it turns into like a chair and then it becomes a love seat and yeah. then a sofa. And then like sometimes hmm. like the sofa's like, oh yeah, I've been training, I've been working out and they have like a chase and an ottoman. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe sometimes in the puberty what? stage, like if you're a gamer, you become a gamer chair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what about like futons? A futon. A is... futon is just like a fucking. <laughs> that's like a that's like a has been, like you know, lazy bean bag. No, I think I, I like the idea of like a futon is like a college student couch. <laughs> Who's like, I'm making ends meet right now, dude. I'm paying for my own tuition. I, I I'm live, still yeah. finding myself. I live in student housing right now. And then, like, yeah. the big couches with the chases and the ottomans and the side tables are, like, fucking millionaires. They have the big the, houses down in LA. Yeah, they're the, they're the elders who made it and then complain about the youth not working hard enough. Yeah, and exactly. it's like, come on, dude. The futons are trying, but, like, they yeah. fold out into beds still. Like, they're not ready to be couches yet. Like, they're still yeah. young. 
the fact that they're doing all this on their own is fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah, they're still young and also being subjected subjected to way harsher conditions than they should be. And exactly, these people just don't seem to care about them. These, these counties these... never had to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. The they never money... had to go through the trials. Yeah, money practically grew on trees for them. Basically, <laughs> they say they say they're self made, but really they were made by their parents. Mm-hmm. These 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 futons have had to work on their own, making a dime, selling drugs oh what kind of drugs are they selling for a dime (laughs) what kind of drugs are beanbags selling (laughs) they're the balls inside of them they're like hey dude i'll I'll give you one of my i'll give you one of these and everyone's like don't do those it's dangerous for the seller and for the person who does it they're losing their balls they're not going to ever develop into a couch because of this yeah and then like you're taking that yeah what if you become a couch dad no i i've been smoking Beanbag balls for years, and I haven't become a couch <laughs> Nothing's yet. Nothing's happened I, yet. I would like a counterpoint for another drug. Yeah. Febreze. Febreze? <laughs> no, that just makes you smell good. The, no, the beanbags that, are like drinking Febreze to get a high. No, I see. Yeah. Oh, they drink Febreze. <laughs> yeah. You can spray it on them for like... That's for beginners. Like, oh, I've yeah, never, that, I've never like, done Febreze they, before. That's can like you a just little spray it on me? Yeah, sure. Man. But then they're like, check this out. And they just sip it, and they're like, man, I'm tripping. Well, yeah, they, you know, they used to think back in the real old days that Febreze was healthier for you. Yeah. Like they did with cigarettes in the human world. Yeah. Because <laughs> it would make you smell good, but they didn't realize, like, if you did that too many yeah. times, you become stiff and, like, crusty. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And you're and, just, uh, no one wants to sit on you anymore. Okay, well, hold on. No, I'm sorry. So you did mention that the human world is different yeah. from this world. How do we get couches and chairs in our world and beanbags and everything here? Are they from that other universe? And like, no. when they die, they become like cyan stuff and makes then sent over couches. to our into our universe. Or is it something like cyan they... Kermit makes our couches? We all right, Sam. I guess we forgot to. Yeah, okay. Thought, thought, we forgot to mention Thoughts on Allure. <laughs> Sam, we cannot keep bringing up actual Thoughts on Allure every single... Uh, we can't actually have an underlying Is this not plot. what we're trying to establish with the couches? No. No. Sam, what? this is a podcast. That, it, it relates in no way. How does Kermit relate in any way to a couch? There's Where do you no think they get the filling there. for the beanbag? You bags. literally only did that to make a callback to our last episode. Where do you think they get the bean bags, the the beans in the bags, Brett? God. <laughs> Which we established was Kermit from, and uh, Santa. Materials found in the earth and in nature that could be processed and recycled into other materials to make uh, bean bags. Sam, what are you talking about? I'm talking about where we get bean bags from. You asked the question, where the where oh. we get them from? You said we God. I'm from- talking about science. We get them from factories. I think it's probably time for the next segment. We get them from factories. I think factories. so as well, but a little a little kind of thought. If y'all, you know, some extracurricular thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the air bean bags? Like the blow-up bean bags. What are those in the bean They're bag not world? bean bags, dude. They're, they're literally just bean bags that someone hunted and killed for sport and then just emptied them. That bean Jesus. bag never got to experience life because of some poacher. And now... I'd like to take a moment to establish a PSA of poaching is for losers. Don't do it. Save the bean bags. Save Thank you for your bags. time. All right. you and know. don't buy water bean bags either. You know those are also just dead poached bean bags filled yeah. with water. You're not fooling anyone. The only the only kind of good bean bags are the ones that are stuffed with I don't know the balls or the sand or whatever. Yeah. The bones. They're also, they're, oh, the wait, bones. there's also the memory foam ones, but those ones are, like, growing up from, like, they're, like, in the stage between uh, beanbag and, like, armchair, and then from arm, so th- those are the memory foam beanbags. If you're a beanbag and you're a memory foam beanbag, you are a rich, snobby little fuck. Yeah, right, you're Brett, next spoiled. Segment. You already know. <laughs> okay. Let's, wow. Damn. Okay. Uh, next segment. Let's move on to my dream. <laughs> This dream comes from Louis Fertel on Twitter, and it says, Ooh, Twitter. I have a recurring nightmare that oh. I win the voice, but 
Carson Daly says, I only get the money if I can name another winner of The Voice. Shit. Yeah. Wait. Wait, oh, read God, that last part to me again. My brain blanked. You All right. Recurring Nightmare, you win The Voice. Mm-hmm. Carson Daly mm-hmm. says, you only get the money if you can name one other winner of The Voice. Uh. Shit. I know, like, 500 names from The Voice, but they're all, like, runner-ups and, like, third place. I have literally never seen an episode of The Voice that isn't, like, Getting, auditioning. Like, uh, yeah, Could right? You? I've never seen an episode. It's always an audition or it's a battle. And there's ne- I've never seen it, like, get down to the last few. No. You know? Could you technically name one of the judges who won? No, because the no. judges are pop stars. Yeah. Yeah, but, like... That's- Remember, it's like technically like they they have a team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like no. they've all won then. They've all won. All the judges have won at some point then. Oh, you yeah. got to name an actual. All contestant. I remember is that CeeLo was on it. CeeLo was a judge at one time. Yes. And then when, and wasn't it like Brad Paisley or something? It was uh, George. Lucas. Sexiest, sexiest man alive, uh, Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. It was Blake Shelton. Shakira used to be on it, but it's Gwen Stefani now. Maroon 5's Adam Lambert uh, was and is still a host, I believe. Uh, Jesse J, I think, was a host on British The Voice. But that's, Miley Cyrus. Did she host it? I'm pretty sure. They've had a lot of people kind of coming and going. Yeah, they have. Like each season. So Brad Paisley year. won the most, right? Who... There's no I don't Brad, think Brad Paisley. Paisley is not involved in the voice. She never said Brad Paisley. Oh, right. Some other white guy's name that starts with a B. Blake, Blake Shelton. Shelton. The yeah, some other country himself. dude's name. Yeah. Blake Shelton. <laughs> I don't know. No uh, one's won the voice. No one's... They've never really got to a final two. That's just how yeah. it is. I, 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 okay, so I, I think I can name off the top of my head right now two people from the voice. Two, like, contestants. And both of them are third place winners. Okay. Like, I don't know any of the second place or first place. I only know the third place. Kelly Clarkson. American Idol. (laughs) (laughs) See, I would say that, though, and they would be like, eh, close enough. Like, eh. Well, no, because none of the winners from The Voice really got anywhere, I don't think. Um, There was this... I don't know a single person that's... Uh, oh no! Wait, Melanie Martinez. Melanie didn't win. Melanie Martinez is a third place winner, and then Christina Grimmie is the other third place winner. Okay, all right. But well, yeah, the two names that you would know from The Voice, and they're neither of them are first place or runner up. So I think I, my main problem with like the show, I think my main problem with like shows like American Idol and like The Voice is the fact that like they're always singing other people's songs. And it's kind of like, that's great. You're a great singer, but in order to like truly do well in the music industry, you have to be able to have your own songs. Well, that's well, the thing with American Idol is like, are you gonna be a? Are you a pop star? So they do the covers there, and then at the end they're like, all right, you won. Now perform your original song, and everyone freaks out about it. I don't really know what the voices stick is. I think it's covers oh. all the way through. I. They, I don't know. I've never watched a single episode of either. I'm pretty sure on the finale of the first season of American Idol, Kelly Clarkson did an original song, right? Yeah, she did a fucking moment like this. And then, like, past that, no one did it. But here's the thing, Sam, is that pop stars aren't really writing their own songs anyway. That's a yeah. good point. That's it's a good like point. It's not like it matters. They're you know? all being written by Sia. But, yep. yep. <laughs> Every single song in the last 20 years has been written solely by Sia. Yep. <laughs> and we thank her for this surface. Thanks, Sia. She is so good in every way, shape, and form. I've been really into one artist called Woodkid, and all of his, all of their songs sounds like a fucking like intense, dramatic thing from a movie. Shout out to Woodkid on the Thoughts on a Podcast. <laughs> Check yeah. out Woodkid's new album, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Night in the Wood Kid. Night Woods Kids Woodkid. Is he, mm, is he just like a mm, solo mm, person or backing out of that one? I'm not sure. Great. Cool. Let me look l- let's but see. But all of his songs were written by Sia, obviously. Yep. Uh man, even well Beyonce and Sia collaborate. Yeah. 
you know yeah they've d- they done some things together yeah all the rihanna songs all the uh kid cuddy songs kid cuddy songs all the kanye songs <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Sia wrote like all of the My Chemical Romance like so- from the gig from 2002 to 2000 like yeah. uh, the entire like time y'all together, have you years. listened to Fall Out Boy's Mania? That is Sia written all over it, literally, <laughs> literally. She wrote her name all over all the demos Just everywhere. Yeah. I remember watching interview and Patrick was like, yeah, I, we didn't want to stop her because like it's her creative process, but she really did. She was on a writing her name and marker everywhere. Just with a sharpie, J- wrote it on my arm. Still can't get it off. She signed my guitar. <laughs> Which was great. I was going to ask her, but she did it anyway. Patrick, uh, Stump was inje- Patrick Stump was injected by a chemical formula that is slowly turning him into Sia. It all makes oh, sense now. Is he like the next form? Has she chosen a successor? Like she, no, like she's it's like, more right, she Patrick, chose an experiment. Apprentice. She's still searching for a proper... Oh. Protégé, All right, so she's testing to but, see if he can handle her essence. Oh, so it's like yeah. the voice, but Sia is the judge, and she's getting all these singers to be like, "Who's the next Sia?" So mm-hmm. basically, if you win the voice, if you name who the next successor to Sia is, you can actually get the money. Oh, so you think you can see her? Oh, so you think yep. you can see her? <laughs> and it's like see her, but like see her, see her. And it's I Sia. told you, I told you about what Brody did la- last time I saw him, and Sia came on the radio, right? You did not. Absolutely not. Uh, we were just sitting in like in the car driving, and Sia came on the radio, and he goes, "It's Sia, it's Sia," and he starts bouncing his hands to the beat of the music, and he just keeps going, "It's Sia." Brody is Sam's little brother, by the way. Yeah, my little four-year-old brother, <laughs> and possibly the next successor to Sia. Possibly yep. the fourth host of Thought Sana. We are putting on a fourth permanent host. The fourth, and it's be the him. fourth Sia Kage. The Sia Kage, eh? We gotta come up with some new titles for, like... Anything. For yeah. anything instead of just Kage. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, Naruto references are funny. They sure <laughs> are. The uh, the Sia Soul Reaper. Sia Saiyan. The yeah, Sia Saiyan. The Sia Saiyan. Bonkai. The, did you just say Super Bonkai? I said the Sia Bonkai. Gotcha. Great. Sia Kai. So Brody has to defeat his sword, who is Sia, in <laughs> order to use her for music. It 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 works out. Sia's like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure stand. Yeah. Yeah. And Brett and I understand that. Do you do you understand JoJo's Bizarre Adventure references? <laughs> He's Sam has tried to describe like the first arc of JoJo to me, and it is just been my, yeah. My friend Chris wild. has tried to describe it all to me, and I still do not know fucking jack shit about it. The basic of the first arc is we don't need to educate wait a second, our viewers. Just wait, I'm, just gonna, wait. I'm going to keep it to like a single sentence. Uh, all right, okay. go for it. Here's the single sentence summary of the entirety of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. No, just the first arc. The, no, the whole thing. Oh, God. I haven't even seen the whole thing. All right, just the first arc, then. S- buff strong man beats immortal vampire nemesis by breathing real well. All right, I know you intentionally made that vague and ridiculous. So congratulations but on that not is helping us add Yeah, it's just like, like the fucking boner anime. You. Like, that is the most boiled down description I can give you. They just, it's just dudes with like rippling weird angle muscles that just pose. Hey, I'm and pretty also sure, attack? I'm pretty sure the, one of the most recent ones is uh, a, a female lead. Okay. Ooh, the George's Bizarre Adventure is woke. Yeah, change it. Um, I think the main villain of either the current or the last current arc was the president of the United States. Okay. Great. And his stand. I'm not even joking. His stand was a Lego Lego model of the White House. That was his superpower. That okay, that makes no sense in so many different ways. <laughs> that was so his, many different uh, ways for me. Are you are you like trying to look up what a stand is, Cyan? Uh no, I'm getting ready for the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time. <laughs> Great. If you can actually if you can actually summarize JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in one sentence, go ahead and message us, and we'll give you the, the voice money. 
<laughs> you win. Yeah, send it send it to us privately on Discord, and we'll uh, we'll pay you. All right, so I have a law. Um, this law is f- found. I found it on police1.com, and it says it's sourced from idiotlaws.com, and I went to that website, and it's the same exact text with no more information about it. So I took to Google, and I tried to find anything, any validity about this law. Um, I even started to read through uh, the Connecticut, like, uh, it's not a TDLR because it's not Texas, so I guess the CDLR for uh, laws regarding you've done a lot of research like in yeah I, I tried to find anything with no I, results yeah i tried to find anything i could couldn't might not be a real law let's pretend that it is all okay. right boys all right this is in connecticut it is illegal for a barber to hum a tune while cutting your hair <laughs> if they hum a tune they get their license fucking revoked game goddamn over See, God, I would, if they I if they get another offense of that shit, they get arrested for goddamn forty five years or some shit. I'm sure. See, I've never. I don't think I have ever run into a, that issue where like every time I go to get a haircut, either the bar the barber will just like talk to me and will make decent small talk, or it is dead silent the entire time. This is the experience I had when I went to get my haircut yesterday. Actually, it was dead silent except for me saying wow i had no idea how long my hair had gotten and she went <laughs> and then we went back to our silence for the next 10 minutes you went to a salon that like played no music well there was music but no one hummed along to it so you went to a salon full of people who don't like to have fun okay you went to a salon of people who aren't actually very uh you know what? Maybe it's illegal. Maybe it's illegal in Texas too. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe. you can't do it in Texas. The first thing I thought of was that the barber is putting a pentagram in your hair and is humming the tune to summon the demon. I don't know why that. <laughs> what's the tune? What's the that tune was the first to place summon he went, the demon? Right? Give, us, that give us a little taste of the demon summoning tune. <laughs> that I goes. You know in the fighty zone. <laughs> you know in the fighty zone. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they uh, and then the demon comes from your hair, and uh, and the demon looks great. Yeah, <laughs> because the demon <laughs> has got a like, really clean hair. undercut. Yeah, and then well, the barber then does the demon's hair and makes it into a a, a really good looking. You guys hawk. get matching haircuts. He gives you and the demon a matching haircut, and you're yeah. like bound. Customers never fucking tip enough. You'll summon a demon and make the demon look great. You look great. You have a new friend. Uh, you can also now do shit like see in the dark fly. Uh, you never have to worry about like nutrients again. Like you're fucking just you can you're do whatever. Immortal. You're immortal now. Yeah. Also, um, but they never fucking tip you. It's, it's see, like I used to do that shit when I did when I used to do hair. I fucking I've summoned demons on every goddamn head. Yeah, and I never got a goddamn tip for it. They'd always be like, oh, I love it, but they would never give not me even eight percent. Like not I even five bucks. Sure Come on, man. Because like. I mean, it's a service that I need, and these people, like, yeah, they're getting paid, but yeah, I'm sure, like, I would want to get tipped if someone had to touch my hair and, like, deal with all that. Like, especially oh, yeah. if they're going above and beyond and, like, giving you a Making whole it. new entity to fuse with. I've always yeah. I've always been so worried, like, if I haven't showered in a while, mm-hmm. and I'm, like, getting a haircut, like, oh, God, I don't want them to be drawing the pentagram on, and then the demon comes out all greasy and stuff, and they're yeah. grossed out by it, and their hands are all, like, messed up. But they do that. They just go through that all the time, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah they I cannot imagine day. the gross shit barbers have had to deal with. Oh, no. The fucking, some people are goddamn disgusting. Some Some people come in, and they have the grossest fucking heads ever. Yeah. Ugh. Thoughts on a, a history. I, I went to cosmetology school and did hair for like a year. Mm-hmm. And then stopped. And then that was about that. And that's the end yeah. of uh, that little career path that I thought I wanted to go on. I quit pretty abruptly and never went back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story. Do, 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 do. Oh, man. So what would it be? Now I'm just thinking. As a, as a, like, a past hairstylist, would it be fun if I like... Put a little gift in my hair. Oh, for, for like the for the yeah the <laughs> demons like love a little that acorn shit. or some shit. Like a little like a little wrap present, and it's like a little mood ring or something, you know? Yeah, that's never that's never anything but, for like 
it's, that's obviously not for me. That's for the demon to come out. You do want to sit down in the chair and be like, oh, hey, by the way, I do have this for the demon. Otherwise, the barber's going to be like, well, I, don't, I don't know what that is. And Otherwise, they're going to try to cast the spell, and it's going to be way more yeah. powerful mm -hmm. because it's going through the medium that you put in your hair, yeah. the mood ring. Yeah, you, you have to <laughs> communication. You have to communicate the with your stylist. The mood ring is my magical focus. Exactly. <laughs> Who needs a staff? Who needs a staff or a wand or a skateboard? When you just got, it's just, it's just like, oh, I'm sad right now. Cool. <laughs> Mood rings really were something, weren't they? Mm, my body temperature is warm. I guess I'm angry. <laughs> I must be raging. I took my mood ring in the shower with me once when I was a kid, uh, and I put it under the water, and it turned black for angry and never changed back. Because, like, the hot water oh. just kind of ruined it. And I was like, man, now I have an angry ring. Or maybe you were just always angry after that. You know what? I have been kind of like pissed off for the past like 12 years. So maybe, maybe you had a demon in you. When's the last time you got your hair cut? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's 12 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of getting to your feet. It's, it's been a while. You know, some, you need to, even if you don't need your hair cut, sometimes you need that demon out of you. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta release it. It's good to go for a trim. It's good for stress, you know, and it'll help you relax. It'll help you focus more. You're not distracted. The demon needs it too. Do you think their job is easy? The demons? Yeah. Uh, I think they're fine. They just get to lie in your body and kind of command to certain tendencies of yours into going one way. Yeah, you just kind of get possessed, and they just kind of, you know it's that's, that's their nine to five is possessing people. So it's. And then whenever they get something, they get a nice haircut, and they can just go do whatever they want after that, you know? Yeah, they can have a night on the town. Yeah. I think it's fine for them. Fair enough. I think it right. is, too. They can't... Barbers can't hum a tune. No. Because because some people, in, especially in Connecticut, you know, they're like, I don't want the demon out. I don't want the demon out. Don't do that. They start humming the tune. And even is if the pentagram isn't the there, they're just belt? like... Let me look this up. They start freaking out. Wait, what are you looking up, Sam? Is Connecticut, where's Connecticut geographically located? I can't ah. really remember. Connecticut's either on... north or east or west. It's over in that like clusterfuck of states, I think. The like the the original colonies. Oh, that's Not the original nowhere colonies. near the Bible like the Belt. God, I'm a fucking connections. moron. What's up? It's nowhere near the Bible Belt. I'm a fucking moron. Where is it? Oh, okay. I I see your train of thought. It's like. It's up by road. It's like right next to Rhode Island. Oh, okay. So I like was right. Okay. I mean, Connecticut had witch trials. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Now we're getting back on track. The witch trials. Maybe there were some demon familiars. Mm. Maybe some witches were becoming hairstylists. <laughs> in a way to summon their demon familiars. Yeah, as like yeah, as like an outlet. As an outlet. For yeah. Their, for their witchcraft. Okay. Like they're like. Oh, I'm making this cauldron. Like I don't really feel like making this potion today. I'm just gonna go style some hair. You know, that's it, it's just a fun hobby. Yeah. Oh my God, Connecticut had witch trials for fifty years. Which what what span of fifty years? All the way to present day. Now, uh, from sixteen forty seven to sixteen ninety seven. Two thousand seven to twenty fifty seven. Yeah, yeah. it says, long before the much more famous trials at Salem, Massachusetts, Connecticut witch trials were held in the mid-1600s, mainly between 1647 and 1697. Although no alleged witches were executed after 1662, uh, in his book, John M. Taylor lists 35 cases between 1647 and 1697, as well as two more in the 18th century, of which a total of 11 resulted in execution. So, yeah. Connecticut don't like them witches either. Which Man, it's, it sucks. Those witches were just minding their own business. And probably all of, not all of them were witches. You were just and, condemning innocent women to death. Because well, yeah, mo most witch trials isn't actually about witches or witchcraft. anything. There's not like it witch oppression. It was just, I hate women. Yeah, <laughs> Women doing a thing must be evil. Yeah, it was like, man, this whim woman reads... She must be a witch. Ugh. Ugh. Are you sl oh, you don't want to date me? I'll to the gallows with you. Put cement on your feet. I'll throw you in the lake. I. It's time we'll to see if you live or not, witch. Could you imagine though, like, b 
being in a village and you like there's a witch right there and they're an actual witch and you know they're a witch could you imagine not like trying to be friends with them right like and, i like, mean like what you know up? how to turn people into frogs that's dope let's hang out yeah they're like you turn people into frogs i love frogs they're my favorite animal hell yeah that's sick turn me into Can a frog this... i want to see what it's like yeah hop around see what's going on as long as you promise to change me back we good <laughs> You want to smoke a pot? Let's just freaking hang out. Yeah, dude. like, do you want to smoke a pot? <laughs> you want to? You want to try some Febreze with me? Hey, dude, I got, dude, I got some. Yeah, dude, no Febreze, and I don't tell anyone this. I spent three dimes on it, dude. I know, but it's really, really oh, good. Oh, come on. No, it's really good, dude. You've been doing so well with saving, though. Okay, dude, but the Febreze. I know it's the same amount as Is you it the get. Colorado breeze? Dude, yeah, check it check it out, check it out. Shh, shh. Oh, dude, I'm already feeling it. Yeah, dude, even from the smell, you could just tell that shit's good. Man, witches made them. Witches made for breeze. And that's, and that's how it all we, ties together. And that's how we get high, and that's where beanbags come from. Witches made beanbags. And that wow. Thoughts on is an educational We've podcast come hosted, by, hosted by PBC. Full circle. <laughs> We oh, are which is familiar, networks. but instead of a cat, it's a beanbag. It's, yeah, exactly. Which is main beanbags to th- throw at people, but not violently. Which yep. are cool. Yeah, it was originally what they did was they wanted to make uh, a toy that they could use, and they created the hacky sack. And, you mm-hmm. know, you get more excited and more yeah. excited. They keep getting bigger and bigger. Eventually, they were like, hey, this is kind of comfy. Yeah, exactly. It turned into beanbag chairs, mm-hmm. and then beanbag has there been a beanbag couch? I feel like that's that's a. It's like we can find big. that. I like I think we can find that online. Maybe probably. Elon Musk is funding that right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's probably funding something like that three-day acid trip. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, I think it's about time, right, y'all? Yeah, I'd, I'd say. I'd, yeah, I'd say I think that uh, that was a. a bit of solid I think episode. this was a del- like a, an enlightening episode. Yeah, it's a very educational-based podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And where can you find this podcast? You can find it on the email, Gmail. Where, where can you find it? You can find it on Discord. Whoa, where else can you find it? You can find it on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, Spotify. I might need, like, one or two places I can find it still. Libsyn. Whoa. Is there another one? Uh, uh no. That's it. Oh. <laughs> I was about to be like, oh, did you guys add another one that I didn't know about? Nope. Oh, you know what? You can come to the thoughts on it itself, but right, it gets wet, it gets steamy. You'll you're gonna need to bring a towel. You gotta bring. You a gotta towel. bring a towel. Gotta. Some people don't bring towels, and then they just still still we're fucking. They still don't bring towels. We're goddamn how many episodes in now, and they're still not bringing towels. And I've been saying it. We've been recording this podcast for over like half a year now. And they're sweating everywhere, and they're sweating on all my stuff. It's like, dude, come on, man. It's like, I need that computer, man. I need that. And you're sweating all over yeah, it. We have a podcast to record, and now I have sweat all over my fucking microphone. Yeah. And it's making it sound Ooh. shitty. Exactly. Uh, Sam, any last words? <laughs> Before we Sam, kill no? you? <laughs> any nah. last words? No. Oh, oh um, I'm being put to death. Um, yeah. Brody's the new host of Thought Sauna. Yeah. <laughs> A worthy successor. I accept my fate. Cool. Great. Uh, talk to your local witches. Yeah. Make friends with your witches. Break it down. <laughs> <laughs>